from babies to boomers and everything in between. This is Smart Living with Victoria Babu. It begins now on the Big 550 KTRS and KTRS.com. Weight loss coach Charles D'Angelo is uh, joining me here because as a certified personal trainer, I wanted to talk with him because he's really good about the between the ears part of of uh, weight loss, but also trying to maintain during this time. This is not the best time of year to start a weight loss program. If you can do it, then you're stronger than a lot of folks. But hey, I don't want to be a naysayer, but it would be nice just to kind of maintain at this point. We're going to help you. He's going to join me here. We're going to get some, get some great advice from him. He'll, he'll deal with between the ears. I'll We'll deal with the whole fitness part of it, and together we're going to try to help you out here so that it's not going to be a huge weight gain for you during the holidays. Amy. And so- coming up next on Smart Living, we're going to talk about the mindset of eating during the holidays. Are you trying to lose weight? Really? Well, let's talk about that. We're going to join me next as a weight loss coach uh, to the stars, our own St. Louis's own Charles D'Angelo, up next here on Getting You Through the Holidays. Welcome back to the program, everyone. And I know that a lot of you, at least I'm hearing, a lot of you getting ready for Thanksgiving. uh, Physically, you might be challenged right now. Some of you just almost dread it. You look forward to that day, but you think, oh, my gosh, I just don't want to gain a whole lot of weight. It used to be that the average weight gain in the holidays was seven pounds. I don't know if that's true anymore, <laughs> but my next guest who's chuckling with me is Charles D'Angelo. He's a weight loss coach here in the area, and you might have seen him on The Doctors. He's a regular there. You were just featured, Charles, what, a couple of weeks ago sure. or so. And uh, terrific because they profiled among your hundreds of clients that you've had, the profile about two dozen who've lost over 100 pounds Each, with you. Yes. and they Amazing. They accounted for last year, my clients losing a total of 15,000 pounds in a year collectively. So it shows it's always possible. And one real focus that everyone needs to have over the holiday season is to drop your excuses and focus on progress. So many people have this narrative they continue to tell themselves about why it's okay to stay the same or we'll start after the holiday is over. And then Thanksgiving comes. Comes, and then Christmas comes, and then New Year's Eve comes, and then the first of the year comes, and then it's Valentine's Day. The reality is that the only month in the year that doesn't have holidays, I believe, August. So you can always find a way to legitimize or justify starting later. But the more you put it off, usually the worse the problem compounds itself and the further and further away you get from really tapping into your inner power to change. One thing you always say about yourself is that, look, I'm not a certified personal trainer. I became one in my 40s because I'm not I was a doing therapist. Triathlon. I'm not a right. dietitian. I'm but, not a nutritionist. I'm a guy did. that's come up with a system right. that's helped thousands of people. But you also studied... Psychology. Study psych- psychology at SLU. And what I've really focused my career on is looking for what makes something work all of the time. In other words, there are all these different success stories that trainers have, that nutritionists have, that therapists have, that dietitians have. But what is the one consistent piece throughout mm-hmm. that makes it work? When it works, what's making it work? Because you see these people that have been 500 pounds and all of a sudden they wake up one day and they say, no more, I'm done, it's over, I'm changing my life, and they lose 200, 300 pounds. So what is it that makes a difference? Right. That's my, that was my next question, that mindset, because I've You've always said to my, it. well, I've always said to my clients, there's two schools of thought because I thought, you're hiring me as a trainer because mm-hmm. you need that accountability. But once you're there- And I'll, they need the strategy. Yeah, Sometimes people yeah. Don't know what to do. Right. But let's face it, there's no lack of data out there, right? right? I always look at this as kind of a three-legged stool. I always say, you've got to, of course, have a healthy eating plan. And sure. I can tell a person exactly what to do, what works for me, what's worked for the thousands of clients that I've counseled. You also need a healthy exercise program that you can be consistent with. Sure. But the key is, how are you going to keep yourself consistent mm-hmm. when you have your peers around you, when they have the environment around you that says, oh, it's okay. I mean, consider the circumstance. Right now, it's a holiday season. Who in the world is going to start to eat right and start to exercise this time of year? How do you get yourself to really step up and take charge of your lifestyle? And that's what I focus on, is that third leg of the stool and what I believe is missing in everything else that's out there. And that's the mindset. How do you keep yourself consistent? No question. And that's probably the hardest part because Mm -hmm. that mind is controlling everything else. It's amazing how we talk to ourselves, Charles. Uh, We can talk ourselves, as you mentioned, in and out of things. But I found when I got clients and I'd love to know what you how this has been for you, because you've had so many more than I I had because I don't take on anymore. But um, when someone would come to me and I'm taking measurements and make sure they're fit, you know, whatever (laughs) they all tell me about yourself. I want to know, you know. 
always something negative first. What mm-hmm. they could not do, what they have, uh, something negative. And it would just drive, and thought, okay, right away, forget the body, forget everything. We're going to start up the, at the head. You've so. got to start with what really controls everything. Yeah. It's the glue that holds everything together. And without the right mindset, you're spinning yourself into this defeat cycle because you can develop a little bit of momentum. But if you believe yourself to be an, a fat person, or overweight person, you're going to do everything you can to stay true to with that identity. So the key is changing that, starting to look at yourself as a healthy, fit person. And And thereby, with that belief system in place, you're more apt to do the things that a healthy and fit person does. But if you believe yourself to be a sick, overweight, out of control, undisciplined person, and you have all these labels that you've given yourself, I have addictive personality or whatever, the reality is you've made some bad choices. And you can look around. You look for a role model, someone that's been there. And I've been there weighing 360 pounds at one point in my life. I know what it takes to get out of that place. I know what it feels like to be stuck in that place, to hate it, to be bullied, to be ostracized. And the reality is, is that no one outside of yourself can change it. Victoria Babu can't change it Mm -hmm. for you. Charles D'Angelo can't change it for you. You have to take responsibility. You can inspire someone. You can motivate them, cajole them. But ultimately, you have to make the decision that you're going to step up and take responsibility. And once you do, your whole life will be changed. I think you're telepathic because you say something. It's just I'm ready to ask that question. And this is what you just touched on it. So we're standing by. We may be the thinner person or the healthier one of the family. But you see your husband, your child, whomever, the significant parents, parents, Mm -hmm. the significant others in your life that you love and you see them, you want to be able to, as is with with anybody who's unhealthy, and frankly, that's unhealthy or sick, you want to want them to get better. But when they come to you, Charles, they've got to come on their own volition, right? I mean, as a mom, I can't say, okay, daughter, husband, go see Charles because... Well, I you can. I don't you. know how a whole person would See, respond to right, saying it. I yeah. think the key is helping the person find within themselves that inner drive to succeed, mm-hmm. showing them that it's possible is a wonderful way. So many parents come to me and they say, Charles, I have a child that's overweight and they've been this way and they're made fun of at school. Right. You know, what can I do about bullying? And I am one of the thought that says you really can't do anything about the bully. But what you can do is you make the child stronger. You can't take away the bully because you get rid of that one, there's going to be another one. There's going to be another one. But you develop the strength within yourself. You develop that strength within your child so they see that they have the resources innately to be able to conquer anything that comes their way. So by you living a life of real, real resilience, of perseverance, of eating healthy, of exercising routinely, not forcing it, but using your life as an example to your children, you can do miraculous things to inspire them. On the flip side, I could have been the king of excuses. I came from a family of heart disease, diabetes, all sorts of illnesses related to obesity. My father's side was, of course, Italian, so food equaled love. I came up with the idea that to change how I felt when I came home after a day of being bullied, I would automatically go to the fridge, even if I was not hungry, and reach for something to change how I felt. We all have a story. The secret is changing your story to make it an empowering one so that it moves you forward closer to your goal rather than pulling you back and holding you from what you really are capable of doing. In your book, Charles D'Angelo, Think and Grow Thin, one of the things you talk about is that moment. That's what I love for people. What was that moment you went, I can't take it anymore. Claire McCaskill, who's on a campaign, has kept off her weight, you've told me, uh, for a year, 40 pounds. On a campaign trail. 50 pounds. Or 50. Wow, <laughs> even better. I mean, you know, here's, she had to have everything against her. She's, you know, like over 60, or close to 60, something like that. She's on a campaign trail eating all the foods that you, you know, you think on, on the fly. But you've taught her to take charge of that. There is nothing more powerful than the human spirit to overcome things and overcome adversities. The moment for me was after coming to the realization that if I did not change, I may not live to see my high school graduation because of my health habits. I was starting to exhibit signs of high blood pressure. I was sweating profusely all the time. 16 years old. 16 years old. My hands would clam up. My heart would be beating outside of my chest. And I finally mustered up the courage to go to a gym. But because I came from that blue collar family where credit wasn't really an option, I tried signing up but was turned away because I didn't have a credit card. And I went home that afternoon. It was an August afternoon. I plopped down on the bed. I didn't have air conditioning in my bedroom. And I started to cry because I felt that there was no hope, Mm. that my future was that that I saw in my relatives that were struggling with obesity. And I realized that I guess this is it. I guess that this is the way my life is going to be. Because you go into a gym to go work out. You said... 
Go through the whole spiel. They say join, and you got you're excited. And I, I had cash. I saved yeah. up two hundred eighty dollars, and I was turned away. But through wow. God's grace, I, I looked up the ceiling in tears, and I said to God, I said, "If you'll just help me become normal," I didn't say be, have a six pack or be weight loss coach to America. I said, "Just help me become normal. I will commit myself to service to other people." I didn't know what that would mean, right? And to be quite frank, I don't even know where that came from when I was laying there. But it was just like I was totally surrendering. This whole thing over. I had done everything that I thought I knew, and I turned it over to God. And I woke up about an hour later after napping, and I had this renewed sense of hope. And fast forward, I found a gym that did take cash. I had that courage again to go in. I started working out. I started looking for what is it that people do that are healthy. And it wasn't all that much rocket science. It's pretty simple. Eat about every three hours. Make sure you have a good mixture of lean protein, complex carbohydrates, fruits, vegetables, and eat about every three hours. Couple that with cardiovascular exercise. But the most important piece, and what I really teach, is the mindset. How to disconnect Mm -hmm. from that life of total spontaneity, where you have no structure, where you wake up in the morning, you don't know what you're going to be eating or when you're going to be eating or how much, and going to a total life of strategy. If I can say one key that people need to hear and you need to adopt today, it's replace spontaneity with strategy. If you can take out the spontaneity, you can then actually start to strategize where you want your life to go. But if you just go out there and you hope things are going to work out, that's not how life works. Still life helps your skelter. Yeah. Life tends to pull us and stress mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. When we have a strategy, it's just like saving money. Mm-hmm. You can hope to be a millionaire. And, you know, for some people, they do win the lottery. But the studies that have been done on folks that come into money like that, a year later, yeah. they're broke again yeah. because they have not grown. They have not developed themselves. You, There's all these programs out there that claim to change your life in 90 days. There's all these machines out there that say you wear this belt and you'll have a six-pack in a month. There's no magic pill. There's no magic machine. And I think if there was that you wouldn't see the problem that we see in the airports. You wouldn't see the problem we have on the streets. Again, I think the biggest thing is learning how to get into the right mindset and dropping your excuses. I also always say that I look at this kind of like a traffic signal. When you're driving on the street, you see that you come up to a red light and you stop or a green light and you go. For people that struggle like I once did, the problem is the green works really well. In other words, they go, 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 or the red works really well. They decide that's enough. I'm done. No more eating like this. I'm going to commit myself to a lifestyle of health. But the problem comes once they reach that goal. How do you get that yellow light working? Right, right. And that's where I spend time. And that's life. Helping a person to right. achieve. You have to learn how to get into that balance. Yes. You can't just be, I'm never going to eat this way again. Right. There's going to be a time where you might have to, out of whatever reason, eat something that's contrary to your goals. But the key is, how do you stop it after just one? Mm-hmm. How do you not get back into that total defeat whirlpool of eating things that you know are bad for you to change how you feel, committing to a goal, but getting off track, saying you'll start again, and you go deeper and deeper down rather than moving forward towards where you want to go. And and that's what you teach in your book, Think and Grow Thin. I I was saying to you off mic, but I want to share with our listeners that every week, and I'm a trainer and and I've got an issue with my health, that, that food, what I can control, which is food, rest, and exercise, um... I still have to monitor because I'm human and I'm not perfect. No trainer is. You still have to monitor it, Charles. You're not only fit. I mean, you're like muscular fit. Yes. You have to set new goals. Right. There's no such thing as staying the same in life. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. Right. And the key to success is continually focus on where you want to go next. Right. What's next? It's not don't enjoy the process of where you are. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is once you've attained that and you've processed what you've achieved, you've got to continue to move forward. And so many people look at this as As a journey with a destination point that ends. And I think that's where people get in trouble. So many people look at this as having a finish line. And I think if you think about it as having a finishing line, you're going to have a huge problem because there is no finish line to this. This is something, I get that question all the time, Mm. how many people that you've helped have kept their weight off? And I always say, I don't think I'll be able to give a real answer to that until... Well, until my clients are dead, because (laughs) this is something that people have to continually work at. You might gain five, seven pounds, but then you click into gear and you get yourself back on track and you get right back into where you should be and back into the strategy that was working for you. Right, because we do fall off a little bit. But what I was going to tell our listeners is I do refer to your book every week as as that motivation. So I appreciate what you've done because God did give you this gift. Well, thank you so much. And what I want to pass on to everyone, and you sitting there in your car listening to this or sitting at home listening to this, 
this is that if you have a, an illness like diabetes or if you're a child or you have a child that's being bullied every day or you feel that you're too far gone, you've tried everything out there, look, that's all BS. You haven't tried everything out there. You can take control of this. If you're willing to put yourself out there one more time to really put in place healthy food program, a consistent cardiovascular program, I am living proof, and so are the thousands of people that I've helped, that change is always possible. You must put yourself out there again. Don't settle. Don't let anyone steal from you what's possible by telling you, well, no, you don't understand. Because of this disease, you're never going to be able to do this. Or because of how far off you are from where you should be weight-wise, you're not going to be able to do what's required to get healthy. I was 360 pounds. I had a size 50-inch waist. I now have a six-pack. I took my shirt off on national television. I don't say that to impress you. I said to impress upon you the reality that if a guy that was 16 years old that came from a blue-collar environment that had nothing, that most people would have looked at the situation and said, that kid's not going to make it. Going from that to being a 27-year-old person with weighing 225 pounds, less than 10% body fat, being endorsed by the President of the United States, having helped people from all walks of life, from stay-at-home moms and teenagers to national-level politicians, I am here to tell you, everything that you want, anything that you can put in your head that you want to go after is possible. Stop buying into excuses. Stop buying into the story that because this is the way you've always been, that that's the way the future is going to be. As soon as you embrace a new narrative, a new story for your life, your whole life will change. That's Charles D'Angelo, weight loss coach, not only to St. Louis, but to America. You can see him on the doctors, and he's been a regular fixture there now uh, for this season. And again, he just they just featured uh, 24 of his clients who've lost 100 pounds each and kept it off. Uh, again, the book, Think and Grow Thin, your website, Charles. So it's folks can Charles D'Angelo, C-H-A-R-L-E-S-D-A-N-G-E-L-O.com. The phone number is 314 495 Three two two eight, and I just want everyone again to hear. Victoria and I both promote this message: yeah. take control, and your whole life can change. And stop the blame game. And stop blaming yourself. Stop yeah. blaming yes. others, and yes. accept responsibility. That if you're willing to take responsibility for this issue, your whole life will be exactly what you want it to be. But you have to accept that the decisions you've made have gotten you to where you are. And the only way to get to where you want to go is to make new decisions. There's nothing stopping you. And we can help you. So don't be afraid to contact Charles or myself. If you want to hear any more about the information, you missed it. Email me at vbabu, B-A-B-U, at ktrs.com. I'll glad, gladly pass along his information and together we can help you guys. So get in the holidays with the right mindset. Don't berate yourself. Uh, but also, at the same time, you can lift up your spirits. And, and there's the phones And again. there's the phone. There they go. Charles D'Angelo, always uh, such a it's great my, inspiration. I love my, your passion. It's my pleasure. And perhaps we'll do another segment before Thanksgiving. That sounds great. We'll do that. All it's right. a date. All right. <laughs> you take care. Well, don't go anywhere. We've got more smart.